goodness, human beings! Hello! <laughs> it is such a blessing, such a joy to be here with you. Thank you for coming out in the heat. Happy 4th of July weekend to you all. And can we give um, uh, one more round of applause and thank you to Ryan and Kate for the music all this time online. Thank you for that. <laughs> So what do I need you to know? I need you to know, well, also one more word of thanks. Can we give a round of applause and thanks to everyone who showed up extra early today to set up tents and to sweat in the heat. So that's the Daniels and Mark and Mike and Julius. Thank you for that. So we're going to worship together. Some of it will feel very familiar. Some of it will feel a little strange, but don't worry, I'll give you some directions along the way. So here's the thing about singing. The CDC has been going back and forth. Is it safe to sing? Is it not safe to sing? We've got both things from the CDC. So here's what we're gonna do today. In our hearts, we're gonna be like, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. And in our bodies, we're gonna be like, I'm Okay? <laughs> Sing quiet. That keeps all the droplets contained. <laughs> all right, so that's about how we're going to do that. Welcome again to you all. We're going to start worship today, as is our practice, with a confession and a forgiveness. I'll leave a little bit of room and space for us to confess in our hearts, and then we'll hear God's word of freedom and worship together in the freedom of our sins. So let's begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess we do not trust your abundance. We deny your presence in our lives. We put our hopes on ourselves and rely on our own efforts. And we fail sometimes to believe you provide enough for all. We abuse your creation for our own benefit and fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, hear this good news today. By the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live in hope, because hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing together, and I bet you know the words, and Kate's going to lead us. Spirit be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't ready for that. I'm so used now to not having a response. Um, so the next part of our service is a sharing of the peace, which is one of our favorite times to share hugs and handshakes and all that kind of stuff. But welcome to the new world where we get to practice fun, socially distanced peace. So I'm going to ask you to pretend like your feet are in concrete and then to share the peace by looking around. You can do long distance high five. Boom. <laughs> you can do the peace sign, you can wave at people, um, but with all of your heart, sharing that love of God and peace with one another. And so may the peace of the Lord be with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with each other. Woo! I saw some long distance hugs. That was a new one. <laughs> God bless you all. And please prepare your hearts and your minds for the word of God. This is a reading from the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. And Paul is writing, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know nothing good uh, dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. And now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. And so I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of, the, of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law in my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is the word of the Lord. And this is the Gospel according to Matthew in the 25th chapter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know the word. Glory to you, O Lord, is the response some of you got. So let's try it again where we all do it together. This is the Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Oh. I am reveling in the... Um, not just talking to a camera. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So hear the words of God. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace. Well, grace and peace again to you all, my brothers and sisters. It is such a blessing not to preach before a camera. You know, to the best of my counting, I couldn't believe it when I counted, but it has been 17 Sundays since we've been able to worship in this place together. So thanks be to God for this chance to be the body of Christ together in one place again. And in these days that we've been apart, I wonder, I wonder what's been giving you joy. I wonder how you're doing. I wonder what has been a struggle. And I wonder what's been making you feel weary. I think of weary as a special kind of word. It's more than tired. Tired is like I could use a nap, right? Weary is something a little bit deeper. Is this kind of exhaustion, this deep bone level exhaustion that there is it's just been enough but there's not even energy to try to change anything tired is like oh, yawn. weary is like oh. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. What has been making you weary these days? Are you weary of having to wear a mask? Are you weary of the world fighting about whether we're supposed to wear a mask or not? Yeah. Are you weary about rules and things being different everywhere you go? Are you weary of having to rethink stuff that used to be thoughtless? And not you, maybe just me. Have you ever for a minute in this time gotten weary with the people you live with? Did you get weary of toilet paper being a big deal? Right? <sighs> what other things in the world have been making you weary? Are you weary of political fights online and on television? Are you weary of nastiness that people seem to go through as def to as default? Our negativity lets an automatic response. Are you weary of crying for justice and having it fall on deaf ears? Or are you weary in things that are a little more personal? Are you weary of your body's aches and pains and not being able to do things you used to? Are you weary of thoughts in your head and grief in your heart? Are you weary like Paul was of your own actions because you want to do the things you want to do, but instead you're doing the things you hate? Are you weary that you can will what's right and not do it? Are you weary have you ever felt that weariness? Are you carrying heavy burdens? And if that's you, if it's ever been you, then there's tremendous good news for you in this gospel lesson today. You see, sometimes we kind of kid ourselves and we think we've got to get ourselves especially holy and pure and especially in the right, um, whatever, right works, right frame of mind, right something to be qualified to hang out with Jesus. Jesus says, if you're weary, if you're carrying heavy burdens, if that groan has escaped your lips or been the cry of your heart, then you are exactly who Jesus is looking for. You are exactly who Jesus has put out a casting call and a job search for. If you are weary and carrying heavy burdens, Jesus says, come here to me. You're who I'm looking for, because I have something for you. In the weight of your groaning on a hot parking lot in July, Jesus says, where you're tensed up, where your breath is held, where you're groaning and weary, relax your shoulders and lay down the weight of what you carry. Let your groan breathe into a sigh, because Jesus has a gift for you, and that gift is rest. It is one of the unique things we get together as the body of Christ and a gift from Jesus. Be still. For the next 15 minutes here, with the birds and a little bit of breeze showing up, be still. Let the world go on without you for a minute. Feel the prayers of your brothers and sisters. Lift up everything that's been hurting you. Let Jesus give you rest. Let him remind you that all these things you've been carrying and that have been weighing you down always belong to him anyway. Be still and rest. That's Jesus' gift to you today. A peace that passes understanding, a joy that's so much more than happiness, and rest that renews and that gives us the strength to try again tomorrow. Jesus meets us in our weariness and says, come to me, you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing together. Thank you. 
first pray. Each of the petitions will end, Lord, in your mercy, and will respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world and all in need. We pray for the church around the globe, globe, where Christians are assembling for worship, protect them, where Christians are worshiping with print and screen, grant them steadfast in your word, strengthen believers, guide leaders, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations, and especially today, we pray for the country we are privileged to call our own as we celebrate this Independence Day weekend. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful, feed the hungry. Reach with grace to all who are weary and give us a rest that renews and peace beyond understanding. We pray for those who are heavy on our hearts and minds today that we name before you out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for infants and young children that they be carefully tended, for teens that they keep patience through this season. We pray for school boards that find solution, they would find solutions for the fall semester. We pray for the unemployed that they find jobs. We pray for medical workers to remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all the ways you have sustained us in these days, Lord, and ask for your blessing as we continue to offer what you have given us to be a blessing to others, for your blessing on the work of Streets of Hope and Food for Thought Ministries, the people who are being served. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Pray for your comfort for all who mourn. And at the end, bring us and all your people into your eternal rest. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy yoke for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. One of the things that we have not been able to do together is celebrate communion and the gift that Jesus gives us at the table. And so as we bless this uh, this meal, uh, there's some special directions that I'm going to give you as you come forward and we'll be able to receive together. But we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we have communion today, uh, what is going to happen is we're going to start in the back row, and I'm going to call all you guys, all the, we'll say that back row stretches all the way over the crowd. So what you're going to do is come up um, here on my right, uh, your left side, you'll receive communion, and then uh, return to your chairs and take that, your chairs and your uh, communion to your car, and you'll consume there. Why? because it is impossible to eat and drink with a mask on. So this is what we're going to do. What you're going to receive today is this. And it looks a little bit like a little coffee mate creamer, but I promise you it's not. Uh, on the top layer of it, it, when you peel that back, there's a wafer on the top, and then you peel the second layer, and then there is the grace, so, or the grape juice. So 
uh, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. And so you will take that with you and consume your power. As we sing together, uh, if you're in the last row, let's come on up and receive God's body and blood given for you. <laughs> 